On this second Sunday of Easter, I'm joined by liturgical ministers from St. Martin's Episcopal Church in Williamsburg, Virginia. They are Cindy Jordan, Jim Ducebella, Richard Ambler, Jane Hoensey. Our preacher is Andy Ballantyne, and I'm Kathy Boyd. Our musicians are Phaedra McNaughton and the St. Martin's Choir, along with Michael Fager. If you haven't already, I invite you to uh, create your worship space. You might want to light a candle, have some flowers in view, um, either outside or in a vase. Today, our service is the Liturgy of the Word from the Book of Common Prayer, Holy Eucharist, Rite 1. Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery has established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power wonders and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside of the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I say to you, confidently of our ancestor David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, 
and of that all of us are witnesses. The word of the Lord. We will now read Psalm 16 responsively by half verse. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a God goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. And in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. 
Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Here's what catches my attention in this week's gospel story. It's the very first verse. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Judeans, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. This is the evening on that day. What day? the day of Jesus' resurrection. That morning, Mary Magdalene had encountered the risen Jesus outside his open tomb. She had seen him alive after she had seen him dead, and she had announced this to the disciples. I have seen the Lord. But now, hours later, still the disciples are huddled behind locked doors in fear. The disciples might be wondering, are we next? Will they come for us next? Fear is a potent force, isn't it? When we're fearful, it's very difficult to operate out of the frontal lobe of our cerebrum, that part of our brains that gives us the ability to be thoughtful, to reason, to consider complex ideas and to come to complex understandings. Don't you find that when you're fearful, it's easy for the reptilian part of your brain to take over? And that's the part of our brains where the fight or flight impulse comes from. When we're in that mode, there's not much thoughtfulness that's happening. Instead, we're reactive, emotion-driven. How much is, of that is true for you and me during these days? It is a fearful thing for many to be in the grip of the COVID-19 pandemic. How long will I be out of work? Or my kids, my grandkids? How long will the landlord suspend the rent payments? College seniors are looking for work in an economy that's in shambles. Will schools open on time in the fall? Do you know of a loved one who's been infected? Some are even grieving the deaths of loved ones because of this virus. We can't see the COVID-19 virus. Are we doing enough to keep ourselves safe? Have you had the experience in the grocery store or the drug store of turning a corner and there's another person? The reptilian brain reacts. How do I stay away from her? What fear. A few days ago, I saw a neighbor who lives alone and who I'd been wondering about. She was out in her driveway. 
I was out in the street. I was at least 20 feet away from her. And I called out, how are you doing? Do you need anything? Immediately, she backed away even further, way up into her driveway. What fear her reptilian brain had just taken over. I think of the woman walking towards us when my wife Patty and I were out for a walk. We were on opposite edges of the street. The entire street was between us. But as she approached us, she lifted the collar of her sweatshirt to cover her mouth and nose. What fear. During that walk, we decided to go down to the home of some friends to see how they were doing. We thought, well, we can stand at a distance and try to have some conversation. They wouldn't even come out of their house. They barely opened a window. Each day is full of fear these days. Something Joseph Sittler wrote makes sense to me. The fear of death, I am convinced, is at the bottom of all apprehensions. To say that any of us do not fear death is a lie. To be human is to fear death. To love life is to hope and to wish not to leave it. For Jesus and his followers on the evening of that day, the fear of death has taken over big time. Their reptilian brains are, have taken over. It is as if Mary has not even told them about seeing the resurrected Jesus. The disciples aren't able to process that, to think, to understand. And now it gets worse. The risen Jesus suddenly stands among them. It seems to me that the evangelist is trying to describe what cannot be described, Jesus' resurrected body. It seems to me this is what St. Paul writes about in that great 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians. In the resurrection, we will have resurrection bodies. Think of this here in what the gospel writer is trying to describe. Jesus in his resurrected body is able to pass through a solid wall with a locked door, but still he is standing there in physical presence, but he's not recognizable. Peace be with you, Jesus says to these terrified followers of his. But those words are not enough. So after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. He still has physical wounds. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Now they had eyes of faith. With eyes of faith, they recognized the risen Jesus. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. This morning's story brings great good news. Christ is risen, alleluia, and the risen Jesus enters into whatever it is that makes us fearful, bringing forgiveness, drawing us into grace. You come to know the risen Jesus through your daily practices of the faith that help you turn away from your reptilian brain in your daily prayer in your spiritual reading, in your conversations with someone who's a wisdom figure for you? Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. And then he says this, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. Receive the Holy Spirit, Jesus tells the disciples, and he sends them out with the power to forgive sins. Sin at its root is to turn away from God. Sin means we're not trusting God. We're thinking it's all up to us. What a fearful thing that is because we know how if it's up to us, we are doomed. But forgiveness of sin brings the grace to let go, to trust God's goodness and compassion. 
What good news this is that the risen Christ sends us out to proclaim. Forgiveness, do not be so hard on yourself. It's not up to you. The risen Jesus enters into whatever it is that makes us fearful. And then the risen Jesus sends us out to take resurrection life right out into whatever is making others fearful. Where is that for you? For some, that looks dramatic. Here's a Facebook post from a young adult who was a child when I was her pastor in the 1990s. She writes, I am an RN at NYU Langhone Medical Center in Manhattan. If you have a family member or a loved one who is patient, who is a patient that you're not able to see, I would love to stop by to visit them before my shift begins or after my shift ends. I cannot offer medical updates or communicate with the medical team involved in their care, but I can offer a hand to hold and a friendly face. I can also FaceTime family members to say hello or to see their loved ones during this difficult time. Visitation is suspended right now and nobody should feel alone when they're sick or hospitalized. I can play music for them, hold their hand, bring them cards with well wishes, or FaceTime with loved ones. We're stronger together and we will get through this together. Please private message me if I can help in any way. Wow, huh? With your eyes of faith, don't you see the risen Jesus in that incredibly courageous and compassionate hospital nurse? The risen Jesus enters into whatever it is that makes us fearful. And the risen Jesus sends you and me out to take that resurrection life among others who are fearful. What does that look like for you? For most of us, that will not look as dramatic as entering into hospital rooms full of infected patients during a pandemic. But with a sense of call and with awareness, each of us is surrounded by opportunities. Who is the neighbor who lives alone who might be in need? When you encounter someone on the street, how can you communicate peace be with you? Is there someone you can call on the phone regularly just bringing Jesus' presence, peace be with you? How can the risen Jesus become visible through that stimulus money that's coming to you? For many, of course, that money will be desperately needed and indeed won't be nearly enough. But if the stay-at-home orders have not decreased your income, who will you write checks to or click donate buttons? What is your favorite nonprofit that's set up to give money or to those in need or food or baby items? Could you write checks to people who would have offered services to you during these weeks? The person who cuts your hair, the person who gives you a massage, etc. Is the owner of your favorite restaurant able to forward funds to the laid off wait staff? Could you use the stimulus assistance to buy even more gift certificates to restaurants and stores than you were going to? What a story we read this week. It's a story bringing great good news. Christ is risen. Alleluia. The risen Jesus enters into whatever it is that makes us fearful, bringing forgiveness, drawing us into grace, and sending us out. In the name of God, who is Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen.
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan, our bishop, and all bishops and other ministers, that they may, by both their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to the congregation of St. Martin's, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also, so to rule the hearts of Donald, our president, Ralph, our governor, and all those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in the whole creation, 
they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort all who those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We pray for Jeff and Gail, Teresa, Robin, Cindy, Fred, Ruth Ann, Paula, Margaret, Bob, Ted, Jeff, Mary and Byron, Anne Marie, Emily and family, Ina, Edmund, and Mercedes, Carol, and the T.C. Smith family. We commend to your care Mike and others who are receiving hospice support. And we also bless thy holy name for Jonathan Hicks and Hulda Smith and all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching me to grant them continual growth in thy love and service and to grant us grace so to follow the good example of Martin and all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these, these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, only our, mediate, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I just have a couple of announcements for you. I particularly want to thank Pastor Andy Ballantyne for showing us the risen Jesus today and uh, for those encouraging words to have the eyes of faith. That is a wonderful and appropriate Easter invitation to us. Now that the adrenaline of Holy Week, the first month and Holy Week and Easter are past, as we head into Eastertide, please continue to watch your emails. We'll be looking for new ways to stay connected and new opportunities for our continued faith formation. There will be um, some, some opportunities coming your way, so please keep an eye out on your, on your email for that. Do not fear. We are together and we'll stay together in community. Thank you for being in touch with us at uh, the office and staying in touch with each other and reaching out and tending to one another. That's very important. That's the way we'll get through this. Peace be with you. I love you. And now my friends, the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of the risen Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.